Hi, everyone. I'm your host today, Kim Winter, Global CEO of Logistics Executive Group. Thanks for joining us today. And don't forget to uh, join us on Logistics Executive TV on YouTube for management insights and leadership thoughts that we're sharing. Today, I'm joined by Dominic Rigo, Managing Director for Logistics Executive Group in Asia Pacific. This is the first in a series that we've branded CEO Roadmap for Survival, Recovery and Beyond. With the disruption that's taking place at the moment, it can be overwhelming for business owners, CEOs and leaders. So during this series, we'll discuss how to survive, recover and thrive throughout this environment. Dom, thanks for coming on board. Thanks, Kim. So, Dom, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself for the audience? Great. Thanks, Kim. Having been on the, on the board of some key multinational companies of, you know, across uh, various sectors from consumer electronics right through to chemical, industrial, automotive, I've seen some highs and lows and none quite like this current pandemic. So how do you see business working through this, uh, this phase that we're going through now? What do you see as the key issues people should be really thinking about and uh, if for those companies who are looking to get kickstarting or turning around from what they're doing, uh, what are some of the principles that you think they need to uh, bring into mind? Yeah, good question. Um, so right now, we see really three key phases that all resilient CEOs must face to recover from this current um, COVID crisis. And really, the, the three key phases that I determine is really around the reflect um, which is the mode that uh, most companies are currently in right now, a restart mode, as well as a revitalize mode as well. So that being the case, you know, across the, the whole industry um, globally, um, this approach uh, works from a roadmap to success. It's been proven before, and really it's the key fundamentals on how we go about um, through this survival mode um, throughout the, all the, the key industries. So, uh, so Dom, how do you see business working through this period? I mean, um, you know, it's all about the survival and it's about the recovery. So what do, what do you see as the, some of the key factors that you've come across over the years and what your recommendations are in regards to a turnaround or a kickstart for a business? What are some of the things that business leaders should be thinking about? Yeah, good, good question, Kim. So I've personally um, been through this process whereby – um, there's a very key three-phased approach uh, to this, and it's all about making sure that you know resilient CEOs they need to be able to recover and recover fast from these crises. Um, the three-phased approach I, I talk about is really around the reflect, the restart, and the revitalize. And really, in going through this three-phased approach. It needs to be a company-wide and a holistic approach, which is going to be the key to the to the roadmap and to the success of the of the program itself. So, as I've been going through and I've been targeting um, key pillars within the organisation, it's very important that we make sure that you know sales um, as a key department, finance, HR, IT, all the key pillars within the organisation have been orchestrated and balanced throughout these work streams. And in, in doing so, these pillars um, form a very team approach um, and, and very much um, not one or no one individual or department uh, can turn around the organisation, that's for sure. So if I use examples uh, that I've personally been through uh, within Toll, Tech Pacific, George Western Foods and so forth, um, it's, very been, it's very much been a, a different turnaround approach um, to a, a normal or a traditional five-year strategic planning approach. So CEOs using the same teams as a five-year plan and approach, it's certainly a big a risk and danger. So um, the recover um, approach within um, crisis, it's very important to make sure we, we use the key pillars within the organisation and not your, your traditional five-year strategic planning approach. Um, and that being the case, asking the right questions to the right audience um, is an art, um, and it's only the the experience um, that you've been through that can deliver the right results. 
So, you know, when you look at successful companies, um, companies that have a lot of uh, proven experience um, are companies that can go through and, and ask the right targeted questions. And in and in this series, um, I'll focus around um, how we ask the right questions. I'll give you some some very targeted um, questions that I've been through myself and um, and leveraged my experience on, um, and that will help um, form the rest of this uh, this podcast itself. So, as a background uh, and a backbone of of all governments across the globe, and especially within Asia Pacific and this economy here. It's imperative that all the tier one, two, and three um, businesses and companies um, not only adjust and recover, but are also there to set up the keys for success within the norm, the new norm uh, for the future. So, you know, every decision uh, that we make from here onwards uh, impacts our ability to thrive um, within the future. And this will require some extraordinary flexibility, a lot of coordination and resilience during what may be protracted as a period of recovery um, that we're going through right now. So at the moment, um, you know, and within Logistics Executive, um, we've created a working model um, and it's been a proven model as well um, to remove all this complexity uh, out of the situation, um, which gives CEOs all the tools that are needed to really drive and, and really thrive through the recovery and, and beyond. So you know, no doubt business owners um, have spent um, the last weeks, months um, in a lot more of this reactive mode. Um, and of course, because uh, no one's ready for uh, the next pandemic, of course. So, um, so, but in going through this react mode, um, it's now time to you know, turn your attention more towards the, the recover and, and make sure that we've got a, 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 a path towards how we can accelerate uh, out of this pandemic self. So really, uh, what I'd like to talk about uh, here is all about this framework, um, uh, this framework that I've personally been through um, to really help CEOs right through this whole recovery phase um, of this reflect, restart and revitalize. So that's really interesting, Dom. I mean, I just want to drill down a little bit on the reflect phase just for a minute because, you know, a lot of organisations take the approach that there's got to be leaders have got to drive their way through this and everybody's got to follow them um, or the organisation's got to restructure or, or reshape or itself to, to move forward effectively in a new environment or a, a, a significantly changed environment. Um, if you talk about that reflection side, are you suggesting that leaders need to talk to everybody in the organisation, reflect on where things are at with everybody in the different parts of the business, or should there be the influence of the leaders driving it forward from the head of the snake, if you like? What's your view on that? So, yeah. So it's really a matrix approach um, through this whole reflection phase. Um, but in this reflection phase, it's all about understanding where we stand today. So again, when I speak about um, asking key questions, um, it's about making sure we ask the right questions on really where, where do we stand today. So you know, questions like um, what's worked, um, what are we proud of? So you know, not just using the leaders, but uh, also within the functional um, teams of the organisation um, in that matrix approach for um, you know, whether it's team leaders and, and leaders of the uh, various departments even, and using a matrix approach to understand exactly where we stand today. And some of these questions can be really um, simple, like, you know, what have we learned from uh, and, and what has been missed um, in our response? Um, what do we need to change? Um, what's been the impact um, on, on your workers within the teams? Um, and also what's been the impact um, specifically on competitors, because at the end of the day, in this reflect phase, we want to make sure we get a very good understanding um, and really get up to speed on the impacts um, to your business itself. And, and separate to all that, um, and obviously within how leaders and, and CEOs of an organisation, um, what do they need to understand? It's all about making sure that we we understand, you know, where. Uh, where the customer's new needs are, um, getting a good understanding of where the current organization's cash flow is, um, 
right through to reorganizing the supply chains to to recover from these customers' new needs, and then really thinking through where the workforce is and 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 driving and propelling through all this is all about making sure there's a underlying thread here, which is what's the digital um, enablement uh, for the business moving forward. So really, th- there's some of the keys for uh, how we move forward. But getting back to, to your question, it's all about really understanding, you know, and reflecting on where our business uh, stands today. Sure. So, I mean, that's, that's, that's great. I mean, thanks for sharing that, Dom. I mean, I know you published recently some material on this and uh, identifying the the key points that you believe that business leaders really need to be checklisting and you mentioned most of those now let's let's just talk a little bit about the customer in all of this um, yep. let's let's hear what you've got to say about where the customers needs come into this and how to engage with customers and has has Modeling changed uh, from what you've seen? Are their, are their business models changing, taking greater or lesser account of what customers need during these times? What, what's, your, what's your views on that? Yeah, so from, from a, a customer-centric view, um, the key here is all about understanding how expectations have changed and how we then communicate that change. So... The customer piece is a very critical piece, um, and it's one of the um, the key pillars um, that I see as the foundation for for recovery. Um, once we understand, you know, how have our expectations changed, and how our customers' expectations have changed, um, and how we communicate that, it's all about then using a very uh, proven analytical model uh, to analyze the customers' impacts. Um, some of the questions that we deep dive into um, include a very much a, a reflecting phase uh, within analysing um, each of uh, our business itself. Um, and the, anal- the analytical phase within the business is all about making sure um, we ask questions like, are our, are our customers aware of the impacts um, to our business? You know, are we aware of the impacts um, to our customers, you know, are we aware of how this affects our business even? So that being the case, within the the, the whole customer um, uh, stream even, um, it's all about making sure we understand and, and we ask questions like, you know, how do we, how has our customers' behaviours changed in the immediate market and how do we see and meet those change behaviours and goals as well? So this is really all around the the reflecting or the the analytical side of um, looking at a business. Separate to all that is all about uh, then using a a restart action plan. So um, in the restart action plan, it's all about then looking at what do we need to do in terms of key actions that is reflected on connecting with our customers, the customer base, and how efficiently we can do that. Where are the customers' opportunities um, and how are they uh, facing our business? And what are the channels within our business that could adopt moving forward? A good question I've always asked um, uh, within the organisation I've worked for is all about, you know, how do we optimise our customers' sales and service channels for the new norm? And without asking that question, we'll never know. So, you know, and another path is all about making sure that we we understand what these new channels are, um, what are they available to our business, and which which are to be maintained and or adapted in moving into a, a post-COVID world. Mm. So you can see some of these questions are all about um, developing these key action plans um, and taking those action plans and delivering on those through these work streams itself. Another um, key question uh, I've always used is all about uh, making sure we understand, you know, within our business, what can we meet and exceed for current customers and remote customers as well? So this this pandemic is quite unique um, and this whole distance or remote uh, customer interaction is very key. So in this new way of communicating with our customers um, in this area, it's all about have we got the right tools in place and what are the action plans we need to, to build out out of our business and or build capability in reaching our new customers. 
So you can see it's a there's an analytical phase, there's a an action phase, and in, in stepping out and, and looking at the future, even the revitalized side in terms of the strategic um, view of the future. Um, there are key things that we need to do to be more strategic in our approach. So questions like, what are the long-term implications for our customer base? You know, what are the digital opportunities moving forward? How do we reinvent our business to take advantage of the digital world even? And more importantly, how do we reinvent our products, our services even, to be relevant um, in this predominantly new digital world? Because at the end of the day, um, with this pandemic that we're going through right now, the approach for how we target and, and communicate with our customers, um, digital is going to be a very key underlying thread through all this and making sure that we have uh, you know, reinvented products and services to connect into our customers, very critical. So, so just on that, Dom, um, clearly this, with the social distancing and, and remote working, working from home and and people not being uh, able to go to their workplace uh, as as much because that's uh, the borders are coming down now. Or a lot of the there's a lot more relaxation around uh, attending offices, environments, and, and being able to see customers. But generally speaking, with the travel restrictions in particular for international businesses, that direct connection with customers has been um, disrupted. What, what's, what are your observations on what that's done to relationships? How do you think uh, that has affected relationships in general terms? And, and what are you seeing um, smart companies doing to, to enhance or repair or maintain relationships when that, uh, when that break has, has occurred between that uh, physical, physical relationship? What are, you, what are you seeing as being the trends there? Yeah, so again, you know, um through this uh, this theme of understanding customers, um, good and great uh, companies have fantastic um, hooks into um, your customers itself. So whether it's um, you know, when you when you remove the the face to face contact, um, it's all about making sure those same hooks um, are, are re ignited within these customer segments itself, and that's why. This understanding the customers' needs is very, very important. So, you know, now that we we don't have the the um, I suppose the privilege of being able to you know be in front of customers as often face to face even um, the understanding of the customers and the, the customers thread hasn't changed. So, you know, good disciplines when it comes to account management, um, good fundamentals in terms of communication, um, not so much the face-to-face, but having the um, the telephone, the uh, Zoom has been a fantastic tool, uh, unlike, you know, with all the other digital means as well, um, to connect with customers. But being able to provide um, quick answers to customers' need um, without the face-to-face has been very critical. So this really uh, stems around the the real um, thread around the understanding of the customer's needs and using the fundamentals that are in place for good account management and, and customer uh, relationship management as well. Sure. Thanks for that. Um, you, I mean, you've been in supply chain now for, correct me if I'm wrong, for probably 25 years. Um, you know, you, you've, you've been a specialist in the APAC region in particular, but also in a broader uh, region than that. But uh, th- that's where your focus has been. What, what are you, I know you're in touch with a lot of customers currently uh, talking about, I mean, supply chain's getting a lot of airing at the moment, um, in some ways much more than it ever has before because people are realising just how important supply chain has been, not just through the initial reaction to pandemic with all the PPE and the medical supplies and all the above, but of course, food and and all of the above. And now, of course, we have major disruptions still occurring, especially around air freight um, and to a large degree, sea freight as well with with limited services, limited capacity. Um, From your experience, what are are you seeing amongst some of your customers in the broader marketplace around... um, Alternatives, or uh, optimizing, or or changing supply chain activity. What are you seeing going on at the moment? Are there any major trends that you can put your finger on, or are you seeing any innovations uh, to deal with the disruption? What's been happening? 
Yeah, look, uh, lots. Of, look, uh, the short answer is uh, lots have been happening um, within this uh, supply chain stream itself. Um, but right now, it's all about really evaluating um, the whole supply landscape um, and understanding how it's, it's changed, um, and more importantly, the, the forecast uh, for future needs. So um, there's been massive disruption, without doubt. Um, the key in, in all supply chains um, for all CEO and, and business leaders is all about first analysing uh, your business. So, you know, our, our supply chain diagnostic tool that we've, we've got um, quickly determines a very uh, clear action plan for realigning um, companies' um, supply chain. And I, I'll get back into the whole asking the right questions uh, to the right audience, you know. Um, so that being the case, um, you know, within your business itself, the whole working capital uh, and inventory has been a key target throughout, you know. So it's all about making sure we have the right visibility um, on hand um, and communicating that back through to the customer segment uh, and the customer channels throughout that. So obviously, you know, um, working capital, um, inventory, and more so the pipeline of that um, has massive impacts into cash flow and, and downstream and upstream um, uh, connections all around. Um, but the getting back to asking the right questions, it's all about making sure, you know, what visibility do we have? Um, what are some of the um, the tax considerations um, in terms of reflecting and balancing the whole cost and and timely supply of these goods and services to to customers? Uh, making sure that you know uh, if there is any uh, imagery um, excess or shortages, um, we have the right way to balance that with what the customers are requiring as well out there um, and making sure that the recent activity uh, is balanced with um, the res re respective um, excess or shortages of inventory itself. Um, from a, a focus on supply chain operations, you know, asking key questions around, um, you know, how do we ensure operations are robust and, and resilient um, as, as your plan of restarting your business uh, are in place, very critical, right? So making sure that we also keep uh, cost under control because at the end of the day, as I mentioned before, working capital um, and balancing inventory all has massive, um, you know, sh share, um, share price uh, impacts um, on costs uh, and making sure that there's a cost control through all that, that side of it as well. From an adjustment perspective, um, we need to make sure that, you know, inventory and production plans um, in this whole uh, restart uh, operations uh, are all there to make sure that we balance that of the, the customer's demand. Um, and customer's demand right now is a tricky one because um, customers are also uncertain. So getting the, um, the connections back into uh, what the customers need and making sure we have the right hooks into what our customers are needing uh, is very critical through this whole um, supply chain and balancing of inventory um, stream uh, works through um, in this whole um, side of um, making sure that we have the right action plans in place. And again, through all this, it's all about making sure that we manage cash um, with customers and suppliers um, and, and having the right equilibrium in place there. Um, of course, through this process, it's never going to be perfect. So, you know, disposing of the right um, inventory that's aged and uh, in, a, in a cost-effective manner uh, is going to be pretty important as well. So, you know, that, that's a real negative uh, term about you know, having uh, a disposal of, of inventory that's aged, but it's, uh, it's a very necessary evil uh, in moving through this whole, this whole phase here. Mm -hmm. and, and moving into, you know, shaping the future, it's all about then, you know, how do we invest in our business, um, our supply chain, and, and, and how do we invest in making sure that we mitigate uh, even future risks even um, if – if we can identify these risks um, going forward even, we can then identify, you know, what investments we need to make in place. So throughout um, shaping any future uh, supply chain, it's all about making sure we have the right investments in place. So the big thing right now is, you know, across the globe, uh, across regions even, there's never been a better time because the cost of cash 
has been the lowest it's ever been. So being getting access to um, to, to investment funding um, and having access to very low interest rates is a is is one great advantage that's come out of this whole pandemic itself. So that being the case, um, in in looking at investments even through this um, uh, shaping the future, um, looking at where do we put the investments uh, in shaping the future? Automation, remote operations. Um, you know, these are very investment heavy um, uh, topics, and there's never been a better time to invest in our business given cash has been uh, this cheap um, ever before. Right. You know, it's an interesting point. I mean, we, we're hearing a lot about uh, availability of cash or the amount of investment in funding that's been pumped into economies by governments and, and also where there's a lot of happening on the M&A, which I know is uh, going to be part of the series. We're going to be talking about corporate advisory um, and in particular mergers and acquisitions. So um, looking forward to that. I think that one might be next week and we'll talk about that. Um, one of the most vis- visible aspects of supply chain we've seen certainly uh, play out in Australia in, in recent months has been the, um, and, and other countries uh, and regions as well, of course, but the the issue of uh, retail and especially the grocery sectors um, in Australia, FMCG, uh, retail, grocery, and where there are two very dominant players, uh, being Woolworths and Coles. And I was reading on the on the weekend, Sydney Morning Herald, about the significant amount of cooperation that had taken place um, within a government formed group of the, all the major retailers. So not only Coles and Woolworths, but also Aldi and um, and Metcash and others that you'll be familiar with, um, collaborating at a level where they never had before, and, and previously would be bordering on a triple C issues or regulatory issues. Um, working together to make sure that supply was p- provided to the high levels of demand of a lot of products during the early stages of the pandemic, um, which brings us to sort of business modelling. Uh, f- so that was a high level of cooperation. I think th- for the first time, many of the CEOs of those organisations were speaking to each other like they had never spoken before. Um, do you see uh, an opportunity for different types of modelling for different types of businesses focused around collaboration with, with, with others who would have been competitors in the past? Are you seeing any evidence of that, of organisations, whether, whether it's a shortage of supply or variation in demand, needing to provide different modelling or adopt different modelling to, to make sure their businesses do survive and do thrive? Yeah, so yeah, th- this is a very hot topic here and, you um, you know, collaboration, especially through a pandemic, um, it, it's a it's a difficult one to achieve. Um, but given that you know, none of us are, are ready for the you know next um, pandemic that that's around the corner, even and we're in one right now, this cl- this theme of collaboration um, has never been more prevalent now than ever. So, you know, when it comes to supply, even um, we've seen. The issue of going to a, um, a retail a grocery store um, and seeing lots of supply um, streams that have just disappeared off the shelves. Um, the toilet paper um, theme is is one that resonates with all of us, uh, that's for sure. Um, but very much um, this cl- this collaboration approach around supply um, is all about making sure that we have in place. The, the right supply chains to, to redevelop and reignite um, to be able to fill the shelves and not have all the stock outs that we've, we've seen before. So, again, companies that have been great at um, you know, de-risking their business have been able to collaborate. So when it comes to key supply streams, um, we've, they've been able to redevelop and redirect um, their supply um, to be able to then uh, re-establish um, those empty shelves on in our shopping centres itself. Mm-hmm. Um, companies that have not been able to collaborate uh, as well um, have seen massive um, customer impacts, um, customer service levels um, you know, diminishing uh, extensively by um, going to a retail store, for example, and, and not being able to get um, key supply uh, of, of basic fundamentals even in place. Um, 
in that whole supply um, stream, um, you know, we are living in a very uh, global um, you know, world, and and when it comes to um, nearshoring, um, it's never been cost effective enough in the past. Um, that's why we've been you know, having to use a lot of global supply chains, and 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 through this pandemic, it's it's very much identified um, how these um, global streams of supply had to be redirected very fast uh, with this pandemic itself. So um, companies and big retailers that have been able to um, redirect um, their supply to a lot more uh, local streams of supply um, have seen very good results. And companies that have been able to collaborate in those um, those turning on of, uh, of local um, supply streams have seen a lot more success through that. And that's where, um, you know, when you go into the um, a retail grocery store, um, the companies that have got stock on their shelves, have been able to collaborate and redirect into local supply very quickly. Mm. So that's been the success of, of that um, that whole side of um, supply chain and redirecting. Okay, thanks. And, and I guess that brings us to to the issue also. For me, uh, in the Australia-New Zealand environment during this phase, during this period, um, we have seen significant, fairly strong government involvement in the private sector and direction, and not only through bringing organisations together and, and looking at supply demand issues, um, also areas of, of international collaboration whereby you know, the Australian government um, put together a Commonwealth body to, uh, to kickstart again, the theme of kickstarting uh, air freight and, and gaining a lot more capacity. And we interviewed uh, Michael Byrne recently who's heading up the Commonwealth body for ensuring there's uh, increased uh, air freight capacity out of Australia. I think he mentioned that it went down as low as 8 or 9% of what it would normally have been. Um, they've now got it up to about 45%. It's being supported by the Australian government. Of course, we're seeing quite well-renowned uh, leadership uh, by the New Zealand government, by Jacinda Ardern, um, one of the first countries, if not the first country, to get to zero rating on on um, on cases of the uh, of the virus, uh, strong leadership there. What, what's your view, just quickly, uh, on how involved governments should be in in supply chains and environments where there is major disruption? Is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? Should market forces play play out completely, or is there a place for government involvement? So ordinarily, um, outside of uh, pandemic material. Um, I've always been a, a big fan of um, free enterprise, um, taking control and, and finding the opportunities wherever uh, relevant um, and making a buck out of it because at the end of the day, uh, that free enterprise, you know, natural supply demand um, instincts kick into play. Um, this pandemic that we're going through is is different. I mean, it's um, and that's why we call it a pandemic even. But more importantly, um, through this pandemic, without government interaction with our government um, being able to help and kickstart um, you know, companies to revitalize their um, key industry streams even it just won't happen through um, the the normal traditional um, free enterprise um, supply demand um, factors so from my perspective um, there's no way that survival out of a pandemic, can happen through free enterprise. And that's why government's roles through this um, pandemic has been critical. That's why we've seen more government interaction um, across the globe even um, than ever before. So from, from a political perspective, um, you know, governments have been, and the whole political side, have been very quiet through uh, economic good times. Uh, but when it comes to this pandemic itself, I've heard more government speak now than ever before and without it we just won't be able to survive um, this whole business stream the whole kickstarting and the business analytics going forward without the government interaction and that's why you know from a government perspective you'll see you know, governments across the globe across asia pacific across key countries within asia pacific even getting actively involved in the whole stimulus or kickstarting of their respective economies 
and that investment or the um, or the kickstarting investment has been critical for companies to latch onto those um, uh, investments and those incentives to to drive forward. They're the ones that are going to be the keys to success when it comes to working through um, the action plans that are required to get out of this um, this pandemic that we're in at the moment and kickstart the business to then reinvent ourselves and then thrive moving forward. So again, that whole um, key phases of um, the reflect, the restart, the revitalize, mm. uh, without the government's um, incentives to to restart, uh, we won't be able to uh, kickstart um, business um, without the right um, keys uh, or, or government uh, incentives there to move forward. So that's why, from my perspective, governments have been more critical now than ever, especially that we've, we're working through this pandemic. And that's why we need to restart and reinvent ourselves to then revitalise the way forward. Well, thanks, Dom. I mean, you, you shared some really insightful uh, views on, on and experiences around what you're seeing and, and what ideas for business leaders to really think about and put in place in their businesses moving forward. It's going to be an interesting series. I'm really looking forward to, to talking to you further. Uh, we're going to be out there every week and we're going to be identifying a whole range of issues for, for discussion, um, hopefully to share views and, and insights with those who who are looking for ideas and, and uh, tips for, for helping their businesses along. Uh, with their, we're going to be talking about workforce as well next time, so really looking forward to that. Thanks again for your time today. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. It's always a, a pleasure to bring these podcasts to you. Um, by all means, we're getting a lot of communication, a lot of requests for um, types of information and the types of people we want to engage with. So by all means, keep that coming in. If anybody wants to talk to Dom about any issues that he's spoken to today, then we'll have some contact details in the comments section below for you to uh, to reach out. We'd be more than happy to facilitate that. Um, for now, as always, to everybody who's making the extra effort right across to keep supply chains and logistics operations happening across the world, to the first responders, to the frontliners, everybody in healthcare, it's really making the extra effort to keep us all safe. Thank you. Respect to everybody involved in that whole scenario. Um, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks for sharing your time with us today, and we'll talk again in the next few days. Thank you. Excellent.